better? No? Okay, well, yeah. yes, sir. Hey, I had a question about uh, certification. Like, uh, uh, one, one is called uh, static, I mean, uh, HIP staff. And they give certifications on. Yeah, like, there, are, there are a dozen great training companies out there. Well, I, I don't know them all. This is my question. How do you know which one that Arkansas will accept? I am going to guess Arkansas is going to accept them all. Why would they not accept somebody that's doing a regimented training that gives you some sort of certificate and learning that you can then take and move ahead with? So I can't imagine the state not accepting. You know, there are a number of good training sources out there, Amsterdam, you know, they're all over the place. They all do a pretty good job. How much can you learn in a day or two? You know, that's the limitation. It's, it's not something you pick up in a day or two. So yeah. unless you're getting into a professional development course that runs weeks or months, and you have to make a real investment, you know, those really have, we haven't seen those evolve yet, but I think those are on the near horizon. So it'll be interesting to see how that works out. Yes, sir. You're talking about small rooms. What is the ideal square footage or room dimensions uh, when you're talking about small rooms? For us, roughly 24 by 32 feet with 36 lights with 12 32 square foot tables. How was the height? 12 feet clear. The lights are mounted to the ceiling and they're on fixed, they're on unistrut, or they're on all thread. Um, we are getting to the point to where we're going to change that to where those lights can move to a certain degree. So we're talking about bringing in a, a two or three foot movement element, but they're non-vented. So if you're running a Gavita, you have to run additional HVAC in the room. I got a Gavita, the new thousand E's probably are like 3,000 BTUs. If I got uh, an ACD hood with a Yuzhou in it, it's probably four or 500 BTUs. So 36 lights in a room, you, you basically need another five tons of HVAC just to keep up with heat demand on your lights. But you know what? It's a cost of doing business. You factor it in, you pay for it, you, you move on about your business and hopefully get great yields and it's just a cost of doing business. You didn't say 24 by 32 for a fixed <coughs> plant? It's, uh, we run eight plants on a table. Each table is roughly 32 square feet. So a four by eight tray will accommodate eight plants. We usually have 96 plants in a room. Now, Josh has a couple of experimental rooms that have more or less, and he's running black dog LEDs right now, I believe, on a comparison. They started black dog side by side about four weeks ago. Um, we're, we're typically running at least one set of LEDs at any given point in either one of the facilities just to see if we're, if we're getting close to what we get with one of the other lamps. So far, we've been Disappointed, but we understood, you know, that's just the way it is. We'll eventually have something that probably does the job. Now that dimension is for both the mature plants and the immature plants? So we run uh, probably between six and seven fifty on a checkerboard uh, switchable ballast in the bedrooms. So we'll run blue, red, orange, blue, if you will, a uh, high HPS and, and HID. So those will typically run in veg. As the plants get later in veg, we dial them up. We generally take plants right before flower. One week, we'll put them under double units for 18 hours and change the nutrient methods or feeding schedules, and then they go right into flower. Will the veg room be the same size as the, the flower? Not necessarily, because um, your, your veg rooms are, are, they have to keep up with whatever flower rooms you've created. So ideally for us, we're a 10-week harvest cycle. So if I have a veg room and five flower rooms, and I'm rotating my materials out about every two weeks, they go in from clone to mid veg to late veg to the one week hardening and then on in, for me that works pretty well. But the veg room is going to be a little bigger because you're always over veg room. <clears throat> you're, you're going to create more plants in veg than you really need because you don't want to be working with plants that are underperforming. So when you're popping clones, you may pull, I need 196 clones to that room, but I may pull 120. Because at the end, when I'm checking my clones and their root production, where they're going, I only want to pull the ones that are really knocking it out of the park. And it's really unusual in the facility that I, one of Josh's facilities, they actually have a little funeral service for the clones that don't make it. I mean, I mean it's just, they're so attuned to the plant. I was amazed. They play a little music, they pull them out respectfully, they lay them out, they say a little prayer, they take them to the 
crunch her upper and throw them in and boom, they're gone. But they do respect the plant. It's, it's kind of cool. The first time I saw it, the hair on the back of my neck kind of plant up. It was like weird, but it was way cool. So it's, what, what percentage of uh, the plant flower do you get to your extractables? So right now, we sell wholesale. The extraction side of the company, it's grown for extraction only in a different facility. The only thing we sell to extraction companies is the titram or the, the key for the, the remnants. So our flower, every flower we grow, gets sold wholesale either through a store we have a relationship or it's the Williams family stores. They pretty much sell everything they grow flower wise. And you know, once again, you go back to grade A, grade B, grade C, at the end of the day, there's probably not a lot of difference between a good indoor and a good greenhouse and a good outdoor grown product. There's probably not a lot of difference. Some of this is perception. But there is risk involved in a greenhouse because you're a natural breathing facility. So you may have powdery mildew. You may end up with other things that sneak up on you. Whereas a good controlled environment indoor, you're going to still, believe me, indoor problems still come up. But it's just a matter of managing your risk. So, once again, if you're growing in Northern California, there's a good chance you're going to lose about every fifth or sixth of your crop. Rains are going to flood you out early, right before you're going to harvest, and mold and mildew, and you just might as well kind of give up. But they have some great materials in Northern California. A lot of them used to make it to California, make it to Colorado. Now it has to go a little bit further because Colorado has a pretty robust market. We got a question here. Yes, sir. You're talking about the size of runner. Did you do any tiers? Did you do any multiple tier? You know, we used to stack tiers? in veg. Yeah. We are so aggressive in veg that veg plants get remarkably large, and Josh just doesn't like stacking. And when you get plants that even in veg can be 40 to 42, 44 inches tall, putting them in and having the rack and the light and distance of light, you know, you're talking 13, 14 feet. So we've kind of done away with stacking and veg. Now, on some of those pictures, you may have noticed, <coughs> run back in quick. <coughs> so you'll, you'll notice that 